So in this video, I want to go through just some of the very basics of a pneumatic schematic diagram of the most simplistic pneumatic circuits you can have out there. Okay, so what I have here, and I'll just kind of walk through the steps of how these things work. So what I have here is a 3-2 directional control valve that is activated by a push button. Okay, and then we have a power source here and an exhaust. Now, when I activate this, when I turn it on, and I push this button, the internal spool will shift. Schematically, what happens is this position here will move over to where the exhaust and the pressure port are. So I come here and I activate this. Air flows up and extends the cylinder. Now, in this case, this is a spring return cylinder. Pretty common in a lot of light pneumatic work. They're very, very useful because they don't require an action to retract them, like a pneumatic action or an electrical action, it just springs will do it automatically. So when I let it go, the air will flow down back through here because when you deactivate the button, this spring will shift the spool back to its normal position and the air then can flow out because the pressure in here drops down to zero because this is now exposed to atmosphere. So then you have higher spring pressure than uh, air pressure, and that spring pressure forces the air out, and then it's evacuated into the atmosphere in most situations. There may be some situations in some uh, FDA-regulated facilities where this cannot happen, where you can't just simply exhaust it out, but most of the time you'll just hear a noise like, if you've ever been around a pneumatic system, you're really familiar with that sound, all right? And that's just a really very simplistic 3-2 directional control valve, push button control for a pneumatic single acting cylinder. Now let's move over to a double acting cylinder like this one here. Now this is a 5-3 directional control valve. Some people may refer to this as a 4-3 directional control valve if they're coming from the hydraulic world, but there's actually five ports because there are two exhausts right here. Instead of it being internally machined, like would be on a hydraulic system if you're familiar with those. But let's walk through how this works. So this, instead of a push button here, what I have is a lever actu a detent lever actuation. So when I activate this, the spool is going to shift and then lock into place. And air will then go from my pressure source here up to here and extend the cylinder the air that is in here will be exhausted out. So let me go ahead and put this in slow motion and we can watch it happen. So now air is flowing up through here. I guess that wasn't very slow. Air flew through to here and the air on the other side of the cylinder flew back down to the exhaust. All right. And then when you go back to the other position, the pressure will retract that cylinder because air will flow through here into here, retracting the cylinder. This will flow down through here back to the exhaust. And this is why we have two exhaust ports, because each actuation port, A and B, need to be able to get that air into or out to atmosphere. And it's just cheaper to have a, a little muffler on there sometimes or just let it spit out into the atmosphere then actually have it machined into the directional control valve like they would have on some larger systems especially in the hydraulic systems. So again, this is just two very simplistic ways in which we can get cylinders to move. For example, a single acting cylinder, uh, a spring return single acting cylinder, or a double acting cylinder with a 5.3. Now I used a, I used a lever here, okay? I didn't have to. I could have just as easily used a push button or something like that. So I just switched that in real quick. So yeah, here's a push button that will just activate this and just like it did over here instead of the lever and the spring pushes it back just like this so again these are the most some of the most simplistic pneumatic circuits out there in the field and understanding the schematics are really helpful because they will lead you down the path to understanding how things work in the real world well i hope you liked this video and if you did uh, please hit the like and subscribe button and I sure appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much.